Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a really fun project to share with you. I've been kind of addicted to making these little guys. Uh, they are so fun, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these for coasters or if I'm gonna, you know, put them as tags on gifts or on a Christmas tree. I have only done one side of each of these, um, or if I wanna make a garland with them. I'm not sure, but gosh, they're so fun to make. Uh, they are a great coaster size, though. You could, like, set your teacup or your coffee cup or your glass on it. And since it is um, waxy, we're gonna be using colored pencils. Uh, you could put some varnish on it, but honestly, I don't think you would really need to. So I started off with some blank wood slices. Now, of course, if you have um, some branches in your home and a chainsaw and you're handy or a bandsaw or something, you could make your own. Just sand them really well. I'm using these from Arteza. These are um, already cut and sanded. About $25 for a pack of 45. And um, this video is not sponsored by Arteza. I am using Arteza supplies. Um, I'm using their colored pencils, and that's because I actually tried a couple um, brands that I had, and I liked the way these worked best. Um, this was one I did with Prismacolors, and I found it was these, um, because this is like, like an end grain, it was wearing down my pencils really quick, um, and it was a little more opaque than I wanted because I wanted to see my lines. I sketched on the lines with some fine liner markers here, they're like micron pens, um, and I just thought the Prismacolors covered up too much of the, the pen line, and I couldn't see any of the wood grain, so I didn't like that one quite as much, so then I drew another Bird of Paradise, and I did it with, um, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, which I liked really well, and that's what I planned on using, but then I thought, I'm just going to try the Arteza ones to see if they work first, because again, it does wear down your pencils, and the Polychromos are softer than the Artezas. Um, the Artezas worked great, it didn't wear down the pencils very much, and if I do, you know, use up a bunch, they're so much less expensive to replenish, since um, a set of uh, 72 Arteza pencils is about 30 bucks, and I don't know, a set of 72 uh, polychromos would probably be over a hundred. I can't remember when I got my set of 120 it was um, That was many years ago when I paid uh, probably 150 to 200 for that so um, so yeah I was happy to use these and they worked really well and they worked better than the more expensive ones which was great so what you're going to want to do is find some stamps that have large images or you can draw by hand um, what I did was uh, I actually went through my stash and I have my stamps sorted I have a lot of flower stamps so I have my flower stamps sorted by the type of design they are so all my big stamps are together in a binder and so I just went to these really large uh, Stampenda stamps here first. We're going to use one of these peonies today. Uh, but these worked really well because you have so much room to color because you're going to find this is a even though it's sanded smooth it's a little rough so getting your pencils into really tiny areas would be challenging. Um, the rows here, I used the bigger rows there for that one. Um, we're going to use a peony today. I used that flower there. Um, and this one right here was actually a really pretty one I got at the stamp show from Impression Obsession. It's one of the Balzer design stamps, and I really like her work anyway, Julie Fafen Balzer. I used the large one here. The smaller, two smaller ones might be difficult to get my pencil in on the wood because um, of the, just the texture of the wood, but that big one worked really well. I did go in and outline a, a bit on some of these if the stamp skipped. This one right here was an old wood block personal stamp exchange stamp, and I had to go in and outline everything because the line were just too fine to really transfer but I like the way it came out so I thought I would share that anyway so I'm gonna use memento ink because in addition to color pencils I'm also using some Gamzol which is a paint thinner and this is what the bottle looks like but I have mine in this little um, jar with a lid with some cotton balls in it to kind of control spillage and also because I can clip it up really quick because I have this doesn't smell but I'll so I'll forget about it and leave it uncapped and then I'll have a headache like a couple hours later and it's because this has been open I think and even though it's odor free it can it still has fumes so um, so keep it in here latched up is a little bit better and then if I spill it I'm not out a whole bottle and most of the cotton ball in there will will um, will keep it from all spilling out and wasting it all because it's kind of pricey I just want to make sure my stamp is really well inked with the Memento, and because the Memento is compatible with the Gamzol. And let's see, I'm going to use, I think this is a slice I picked out to use with that. I think. Yep. 
Now each one of these has a hole drilled on it so you can use it with um, with twine. The kit came with some twine and 45 slices. I'm not sure if I'm gonna hang these like I mentioned before. It would be really cute though like over a mantle if you had like a uh, like a mirror or a frame or a wreath or something over a mantle these might be pretty. I kind of like the idea for coasters though because I like to use coasters and I like wooden ones because they don't stick to your cups and they don't then drop on the floor like ceramic ones might. Now that has a really great impression. I don't feel like I need to go over any of those lines and I like how I can see the grain of the wood. So then I want to choose the colors that I want to use. Now our teas and pencils are very transparent and that's why they work really well and honestly that's why I don't like to use them very much um, <laughs> for, for painting because I prefer a more opaque pencil. That's why I usually like Prismacolors, but I didn't, didn't like it because it was opaque on this project. So uh, try what you have. It's probably going to be fine, but um, if you want something transparent, I would go with the Polychromos, the Arteza. The old style of Spectrum Noir were very, were very opaque. Uh, I'm going to want a little bit darker of a color. I'm thinking I want to kind of keep it in the corally the corally realm. Now this, uh, this is how they come sharpened. I think I've used this one a little bit, but not too much. It comes with kind of a blunt end, so you're going to want to sharpen it a little bit uh, just to, just because you're going to need some help getting into those little nooks and crannies. And I also recommend finding a color to use as your background. I think since I've got corally reds, I'll go with some greens for the background. And I do like to have kind of like a dark um, and a light. Uh, dark medium. We could probably go even a little bit lighter than that. We'll try that. Okay, so now I'm going to start going in and adding my shadow. I'm going to use more pressure as I am um, like right next to a petal that's going to overlap another one and then kind of fade it out with less pressure as I come out. And I'm going to go around and do that to each of these petals. I apologize for any shaking of the table. Um, I always find that with it. it's because I have a drafting table and I have it like up on its highest setting so it's kind of like balanced on those two points there so you know if I'm doing color pencils it just it, it shakes even if I, I don't feel like I'm pressing that hard. As you work uh, if you turn your pencil a little bit you can kind of keep a point on it so that's what I recommend so you don't have to sharpen it and waste a bunch of lead. Because if you really get on a tear with these, it can like wear down your pencils. Although, these don't wear down as quickly. So now after I got the dark color in, I'm going to use the, sun, the uh, middle color, which is kind of this coral color. And I'm pretty much going to um, go over the dark with firm pressure and then uh, kind of fade it off to the rest of the petal. I do want to cover all of the petal with this but just more pressure over the dark and in the center and then just kind of fade it out because I will either go with white with white or a peach. I'll have all these supplies linked in the video description if you're looking for any of them. But like I said if you've got a chainsaw or a bandsaw and some branches you know you could do this project for next to nothing. I'm gonna see if this lighter color shows up. I don't think it really does. So I might just go right into the white. It doesn't seem like that's going to show up very well. I might need to sharpen this, but I'll wait until I absolutely have to. There we go. The white I'm just adding on the edges. We are going to use our Gamzol to blend, so don't worry if it doesn't look very smooth. The white's going to be the most opaque color. Now, I do want to mention that if you have arthritis or any strength issues, this is not the project for you, at least not with these pencils. You might try using permanent markers. Um, that should work just fine. You're going to get that staining look. You'll just need to go uh, very, very gently with the markers because they're going to stain the wood and get real dark on you really soon. Maybe if, if anyone's interested, I might do a version with alcohol markers. Uh, the thing you want to be careful of though is because the surface is, not, is a little rough it may damage them so gee I don't know maybe I wouldn't recommend recommend that. Maybe you could do like uh, you could always do acrylic paint that wouldn't hurt your paint brushes. Uh, so that's probably what I would do if, if the color pencils are too if it's too hard to press for you. I don't need to sharpen those that's fine. So you do want to get some good pressure there. Then I'm going to go back in with my red. I'm going to sharpen it though.
sharpen it to a nice point. I won't have to use much pressure with the red because the red, um, oops, I just broke the little tip off there. Uh, the red just sticks really well. And after you dissolve it with the Gamzol, you can go in with more with another layer. So um, you're not limited. You know, you can keep building it up until you're done. If you find that you've gone over your your lines and you they're just too dark and you don't like it, you can use like a fine liner to go over your lines. So this is very forgiving. And actually, if you don't want to dissolve it, you don't have to. That's completely up to you. So what, I, what I'm going to use to blend here are these little paper stumps. And the nice thing about these is that you can um, sharpen them you can, by rubbing them on a sandpaper block or just a piece of sandpaper. Or sometimes I'll just take my scissors and I will just snip off if I see that it's like fraying a little. I just take my scissors and I would go... Actually, I don't. it's not really fraying right now, but I would just... You know, snip it off until I have a point again. So very, these are very inexpensive and uh, and easy to come by. You can find them at like um, an art supply store with the drawing supplies, even in like um, a uh, office supply store in with the drafting supplies. They would have it, and they're just like you can get quite a large pack for five dollars or less. So, and you just you just sand off the dirty parts, or you keep one for each color. And you probably still need to sand it or clip it just to keep it uh, fresh or to keep it from fraying. But but they work great and they're super cheap. You want to make sure that you get the felted paper rather than the rolled paper for this. Because the rolled paper um, it doesn't really sharpen up that well. Now a lot of people don't like to have this much solvent in there. You can see I've got a lot of liquid solvent around there. They'll just fill it until the, the cotton ball absorbs everything. For me though, I don't find that I get enough solvent, especially with this project because I find that the wood soaks it in quite a bit. You can see I'm getting some crumbs where the uh, stump is, is kind of breaking down. That's all right. You can brush that off when you're done. I like to start in the dark and then blend it to the light. It's not going to like turn it into paint or anything so you don't have to worry about losing all of your highlights and shadows. It's pretty much going to stay where it is. It's just going to smooth it out. That said, you wouldn't want to like use this stump to go do green next without cleaning it off. Or this end of the stump, anyway. Now, what I like to do while this is still wet is I'll go in with my, um, with my pencils again. Because that little bit of solvent on the surface will help grab a little bit more color. So it just gives us a little bit of a cheat. It makes it a little bit easier. And actually, this if you have these supplies and you're working on it and you're like, geez, I just can't do it. My hands are really, it's really bothering me. Um, you could pre, like stamp it, make sure your ink is dry. Then you could actually wet this with like a, with a solvent, with like a cotton ball or something, then color it. And it's, it's not going to take so much effort. Um, of course, that would be just make sure that you're not sensitive to whatever you're using for a solvent because, I mean, any paint thinner is going to work fine. I like the Gamzol because it's so mild, but um, I, it's almost like I didn't dissolve that part. But, you know, that might work well for you. I want to go in and do a little... And you can also dip your pencil really quickly um, in the solvent. I usually don't do that, but there's no reason why you can't really look at how much brighter... The, uh, the pencil is. Just, of course, be careful using this stuff. It is flammable, so, you know, I know we all have our heat tools. You might have a candle burning nearby uh, for the atmosphere and stuff. You know, this is a, just because you can't smell it doesn't mean it's not toxic or, um, or it's not flammable. <laughs> just kind of use your own, use your judgment there and, you know, be safe anytime you're using art solvents. Just because it's you know, designed for artists and crafters doesn't mean that it's it's safe. All right, we'll do one last little blend. And I'm just gonna, gonna hit any of these areas that look a little clumpy. Now, to make this look really nice, you want to put a like, color in the background. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, 
I like I like to leave the border. Uh, you can go right up to the edge like I did there, and it kind of depends on how much space you have and how defined the rings are, but I kind of like it when I leave a little white border. I think that's kind of pretty. So, I mean, that's your, that's totally up to you what you want to do, but you do want to make sure that you think about that when you are, like I didn't have room for that, for a border on that one, but I really like the border there. So it just depends on what you have left for room. Um, I'm going to try to do a border on this one, so I'm going to just color, I'm going to start with my darkest, but I'm going to color within that last rim, that last tree ring. I think these are going to be pretty coasters. I'm going to put these on my coffee table when I'm done. And then we only have to do one side of them. I tend to lose steam on projects when there's a back and a front. Anybody else? You can't look at both sides at the same time. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Just try to get a good, uh, good gradation there. I like to have the dark on the outside if I'm going to do a border because it gives us a nice frame. But if you're going to carry it all the way to the edge, you could have it dark on the inside. Sometimes I'll do both. Like on this one I did um, dark on the inside fading out to nothing and then you know you just have the border of the bark. That was another one of those big Stampenda stamps I like so much. Uh, just keep in mind anytime you're using solvent you're going to want more pencil than you think you need. That's something I've found even when I'm using it on paper, like if I'm using it to color image on a card. If you're going to use solvent, it's even, you'll be surprised. Once you once you use the solvent, it breaks down the wax and the oils and the pencil, so it, it takes a lot of the... it seems to take off a lot of the media. It also reduces any bloom, which is that waxy... Uh, surface or that waxy film that sometimes you get on projects. I'm pressing real, real firmly here. And I don't know if this one would sh even show up on top because they're so transparent. Yeah, not really, but if you do add it, I would just go around and add it in a few places, even though those colors are so similar. Okay, let's dilute it and see what we have. I know I have a green one already, so I'm just going to grab the one I have that's got the green. I had an old-fashioned uh, ink well that I used to use for my Gamzol, but the lid just kind of sat on top. It was a glass one, and it just evaporated so fast that even though it was really pretty looking, it wasn't practical because I would waste my solvent, and that means it's just going in the air, and that means I'm breathing it in. So something like a little little mason jar there with a seal worked ideal. Um, my niece Rachel picked that up for me. She was on a took a trip to Las Vegas and brought me back that. And I was like, you know, that is perfect for my gimsol. And I love it when you get a souvenir that you have know, souvenir that uh, that has a really awesome use. And there's our the little hanging hole there. Actually, I don't think I really need much more. This can lighten up a little bit as it dries, just like markers or anything else. Uh, but there you go. So I'm thinking that um, I would like to have some lines that are a little bit darker. And I think I would like some highlights. So what I'm going to do is just grab my little Micron pen set. These are the Bienio ones that I used the other day. I really like these. They seem to work as well as the Sakura Microns for half the price. And I'm just going to go in and outline. Now, so if you notice that you're doing this and your pen stops flowing, or you know you're just not getting a line, because it can like kind of get clogged with the wax. What I do is I scribble it off on a um, on a scrap of paper or on uh, on a uh, rag, and that helps. Also, using a larger size nib helps. I might need to let that dry a little bit more because it seems to be clogging up my pen really quickly. I'm just going to let that dry. Uh, I'm going to use this. Actually, you know what? I bet a paint pen would work better. Maybe I'll do that. Let me go in and put some highlights here first. This is an acrylic paint pen, Posca paint pen. I might not even need the black after I do this. And this is nice because it's got a, a firm plastic nib so there's nothing to clog. 
You know, it might scrape up some of the wax, but you just wipe that off onto a rag and you're good. I guess probably the, the using like a fine liner would be the best uh, at the beginning. If you want to darken those lines when you start, probably not so much at the end. There, actually that's probably all it needs. I think that's really pretty. Um, I did do highlights on this rose, you can see with the paint pen. I also did a few highlights on this one with the paint pen and on my Bird of Paradise. I really like that. It's really pretty. And did I, oh yeah, I did on this daisy as well. So have fun with this project. There are so many different things you can do uh, with these wood slices. You could use these techniques also if you had some like wood painting panels that you wanted to work on. Um, or if you had a wooden cigar box. Or I mean, look around. So many things are packaged in wood now because they're, it's more sustainable and people like to reuse the packaging. Maybe you can add a little stamping and color pencil art to that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have a full supply list down below in the video description. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy crafting!